What's up, you guys? It's Matt here. So in my live stream today, there was a discussion, a big discussion on burns. And I was kind of ranting a little bit, uh, just trying to understand all sides of how we can get more burns to happen. And the best way that we could see burns that happen is through these CEXs. And I wanted to kind of discuss this because a lot of people saw Binance's burn. It's an 8.8 .8 billion burn. They're doing this out of the kind of the kindness of their own hearts. We were kind of forcing our way in there and saying, hey, you know, we're going to boycott Binance if you don't do any type of burns uh, or do the 1.2% burn. And people were actually boycotting, leaving Binance and all that stuff. They saw the numbers um, and everything. And, you know, CZ said, you know what, we're going to do a burn. We'll do an opt-in feature. They ended up not doing the opt-in feature and doing a 0.1% of their fees. So basically doing this out of the money that they would get from the fees that people pay by trading Terra Luna Classic, even though they have Terra Luna Classic on Binance Convert, which is zero fees. And um, some people end up trading through spot trading and margin trading um, because you can't do margin trading through Binance Convert, Convert I believe. Um, but with this discussion, with everything that we were talking about here, it kind of brought up a different picture, right? A different mindset that we should have towards this. And maybe, just maybe, we can get some of these exchanges, if not all the exchanges, to implement a burn so that we can see a uh, we can see more that's here. So guys, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell for more of these videos. Also, Make sure you check out some of the links down below. It does help out the channel. And if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, at Perry8K, you can follow me over there. Um, and if you guys want to check out my Patreon, the link is in the description. Um, we're doing one-on-ones and all that stuff. If you guys want to join that level of Patreon, uh, you can definitely do that. The one-on-ones are very helpful for not only you, but also me. I feel like I get um, some opportunities that um, you know can happen from some of these plays. So anyways... Let's talk about this. My computer is going absolutely haywire right now, but luckily we're still recording over on this screen. For some reason, this screen is not working at all. Um, so hopefully that works by the time we're done with this so that I can end the, end the recording. But anyways, um, let's talk about this. If you don't know, Binance uh, did a burn earlier today, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys. Binance did a burn of 8.8 .8 billion. Now, a lot of people, and not a lot of people saying like all the people in the live stream, but definitely some people um, have said that 8.8 .8 billion is nothing. I mean, it's something, right? 8.8 .8 billion is a lot. It's a lot of money. Um, but for three months of activity, we expected to see, you know, tens of billions and we would love to see hundreds of billions that are being burned off. But to be honest, that would be Binance burning their entire supply or a lot of their supply, basically diluting their own position or uh, decreasing their own position for the overall gain of the chain. And that's too much, right? They're doing it themselves. They spent money on this Terra Luna Classic in order to have it and have people buy it and all that stuff. They don't want to devalue what they're holding to increase the value of everybody else's. That's improving other exchanges and not their own. So anyways, they're saying 8 billion is not enough and that it's going to take a long time. And I'm not necessarily disagreeing. I think 8 billion um, and however much they're burning is going to take a hell of a long time for this to happen. We'll all be dead um, by the time this gets to a level that we absolutely wanted to get to. And maybe even Terra Luna Classic is just not, um, even relevant at that point. We'll have a lot of other cryptocurrencies that become in the top 10 and, um, Terra Luna Classic will be down in the lower half of, uh, cryptocurrency. That could be a possibility without the popularity and all of that. Now, I know a lot of people are focusing on utility and just by saying that we want to look at burns doesn't mean that we can't focus on utility here. I think utility is important for the long term of things and to establish something for that future is fantastic. But right now, what we wanted to do from the beginning and what we want to do right now, 100%, if people said, look, we can recover the chain by doing this, everybody would want to do it, no matter what the situation is, unless we were minting. Anytime you mention minting, people are just like, no, we're not going to do this. But if we're like, hey, we're going to recover the chain by doing this, everyone would support it. If this was 100% guaranteed that we were going to do that by seeing this implemented, we would do it. So I'm saying that we we focus a little bit on burns and getting the exchanges to do this and not saying that we pressure our way in there. We don't have to do like we did before. I have a different mindset at this point. Before I, I said, 
you know, hey, we should boycott the exchanges and talk about one by one boycotting them and everything. I think we need to take a different approach because I'm sure exchanges just want to be told what's going to be in it for them if they end up doing this, right? We have we have MEXC, we have KuCoin that have, uh, or sorry, CoinIn that has already done a 1.2% burn and did not see much of a benefit. They did see more users, but not much of a benefit there. Um, so they want to see how that's going to benefit their exchange and become a more popular exchange there, or just gain a little bit more on their bottom line. And by burning off coins, you would think it's going to decrease their bottom line. So to kind of get to the point here and not just lead you on uh, here. I think we need to change our mindset from being like, hey, we're going to boycott everything to saying, can you help us out? Um, we know that the reason that we are doing all of this is to recover the chain, to restore the chain to what it once was. USTC, Terra Luna Classic, everything back to what it once was. And I think if we can get the CEXs to implement the burn, that would be phenomenal. So we take a different approach. We need to show them, lay out on uh, a piece of paper in an Excel spreadsheet, whatever, um, what we plan to do, uh, what we plan to do after that, the full roadmap when we do have these burns in place. So basically say, look, we need help. Uh, the chain wants to recover fairly quickly. And I think you guys can really help us doing that. Um, we're going to see that all exchanges try and implement the 1%, a 1% burn to get us to the level that we want to get to fairly quickly. At first, we'll do a monthly, uh, a 30 day test. If this works out in 30 days, then we can continue afterwards. But what we will do is ask very nicely to all of the exchanges, um, find somebody that has these connections, find multiple people that have these connections to ask the question, look, would you agree to doing a 1% burn to help recovering the chain. This is what the chain wants. This is what the leaders within the chain wants. And this is where we can go from here. Um, and then lay out the roadmap as to what you're going to do uh, as you get to certain levels. Um, because you know you have utility that you're planning on um, doing and, and all that stuff. But once you get to a certain level, at what point would you try to uh, restore what once was with USTC? At what point would you try to restore what once was there with the connection or algorithm um, between Terra Luna Classic and USTC? At what point would you be able to stop the burning uh, as a whole? Would it take a year? Would it take two years? Would it take three years? What's your estimate? Do you think that people are going to buy the position afterwards? What's the volume gonna look like? We need to break all of this stuff down to them to understand what their benefit would be in the end. Um, every single exchange, what their benefit would be, what their liquidity looks like, all of that. We need to understand that and give them a picture of where the chain's going to go because the survival of, of this and the, um, the success of this chain depends on if we can decrease that overall supply. But if we're looking to do it a different way, then it's just going to take maybe it's going to be more of an extensive process, a longer process, but we could do something easier if all of the exchanges just agree. So we start with like the lower exchanges, um, ones that have very low liquidity and they agree to do that and they're easier to contact. And then we can say, look, we have all of these exchanges on board, finance, come on, you're the last one. Let's, let's go from bottom to top by volume and try and get uh, Binance as the last one to agree to this and everybody burns for a month um, in their transactions. Now, what could that do, right? I... I did break something down a little bit on what it could do. Let me go ahead and exit this. Uh, let me control Z. So obviously with the last day, we saw about 140 or $150 million in volume, which would be at 1%, it would be $1.4 million, which would be $2 billion per day. Now, don't even factor in the amount in that month because it could be $62 billion or 62 billion coins uh, per month. If you don't factor that in and you understand that 2 billion is being burned off the first day, understanding that it's 2 billion less uh, increasing the price because of the fact that um, you're seeing billions that are burning, um, increasing the volume. So in that next day of volume, maybe you're seeing more than that. You're seeing 500 or 300 million 
uh, dollars in that day. That's five billion coins that you can burn off, or um, you know, a total of seven billion because five plus two. And now you have more hype, more burning, everything that's going on that's happening there, um, especially maybe in a bull market. We don't know. And then you see it increase to uh, a level that's way higher than that. Maybe it's over a billion. Right? Over a billion would be $10 million or 15 billion that's burning off in that day. So as you grow, as you see it uh, going day by day, you see more and more that's burning. Um, and then we can burn off everything that we wanted to burn off. And it'll take us uh, less than a year for us to fully see that implemented and see the, the chain completely restored back to what it once was with more security. So I think we need a breakdown. Uh, I want to look into building that, but I don't have a ton of time. And I would love to be able to run that by some of the leaders within the Terra Luna Classic community to run it by the smaller exchanges to say, look, this is what we plan to do on the burn side. Can you help us out? Um, you don't have to burn until we get all of the exchanges to agree, but we need them to agree. I feel like that's the mindset that we need to take um, or have. And we don't need to be aggressive about it. I've had that thought in my mind that we needed to be aggressive and say, oh, well, we need to boycott everything. That's not the case. Don't boycott anything. Um, we just need to live side by side with them. I understand they're trying to um, protect their business and what they spent money on in order to hold this Terra Luna Classic, right? When it's something that's popular, the businesses or the exchanges are spending money to get them. When it's something that's not as popular, that needs to gain popularity, the project is spending money to get on Binance and KuCoin and, and Coinbase and all of those. But it's the opposite way. They spent money, let's protect their investment, let's show them that we will increase their bottom line by doing this. So we need a full breakdown of everything and run it by them, smaller exchange to medium exchange to larger exchange. Let me know what you think about this. Um, I haven't, and if you want to run it by anybody else that's on YouTube as well, feel free to run it by them. I don't think this needs to be the full utility. Understand that this is not utility. This is a recovery plan. That's pretty much it. That's all it is. And it doesn't need to be 100% there um, all the time. It's going to get to a certain point and then it gets turned off. And now we're, we're at a level to where we can restore the chain. We have security and we're completely recovered. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you think in the comment section below because I'll be reading all the comments and um, I will catch you guys in the next one. See ya.